enough information. And so I'm real excited about our speakers that we have online today. But I did want to give you a couple of announcements. First of all, um, most of you, well, any of you who are riding wheels should have gotten a letter by now. And I was asked to um, give you the highlights of what is in that letter. As you know, we had our wheels program last month uh, on the new, um, the new provider, which is RATP Dev. And one thing they said in their letter was that their shirts are now UK blue instead of the red that we were used to. So some of you may not know that, but that's, that is a change. Mm -hmm. And um, in the letter, it said that you can make your reservations up until 5 p.m. the day before. So I'm, say, I'm announcing that. However, what I've heard from our participants is that really it's a good idea to make them two weeks ahead of time, if you know, and if you can, because of the, um, the need to accommodate all the requests, okay? And uh, you wanna get in there. So I think we did pretty good getting most uh, of our people in today. I know a couple of people were running late, but we did good. And I hope the pickup times are just as good. One more thing I wanted to announce about the wheels change over is there is a comment line, which they're happy to take uh, commendations, which is, you know, praise and also complaints. And so that number is 859-244-2030. So that's, you know, remember 859 and then 244-2030 if you have any anything you need to um, tell them. All right, so we also want, I want to announce that we're, our food fair is going to be November 9th. Uh, Teresa's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. And then our holiday luncheon for our membership is December the 7th, and that will be at Centenary United Methodist Church on Tates Creek Road, where we've had it uh, several years in a row uh, at the fellowship hall there. So uh, here's the food fair. That's the most exciting thing coming up in November. I'm gonna let Teresa talk about that. Hello, everyone. Hi. It's great to be back. I feel like I've been gone forever. It was three, three full weeks of training at Leader Dogs for the Blind, and I'm so happy to be back with my new partner in crime, Risa. <laughs> Risa is my new guide dog. She is in my office. We have a gate up. She's very excitable, so we're not able to really let people come in and pet today because she's so excited over all of the, the chaos going on here. But if you just want to walk by and, and take a look at her, um, we, we might even be able to, I need to be on the floor with her to keep her calm so she doesn't jump or bark. But um, the food fair, we are excited to offer something a little different this year in November. Instead of having um, one of our lunch and learn meetings, we are going to do what we're calling the food fair. And I just got word from Pete Alberti who connected us with Humana and they are going to sponsor it, which means that they are providing funding for us to provide a sack lunch for you to take home after the food fair and also some fresh produce that we'll be able to purchase. The food fair is, will, will be our food distribution for November. It is November 9th, which is a Wednesday. We're going to be doing it from 1 to 2.30. During this food fair, you'll not only pick up your food uh, to take home with you for November and a little extra uh, type of fresh produce that we will purchase, not leftovers, which is great. Hopefully it'll last a little longer. But we're also going to invite a few different agencies to be here to help people through the holiday and winter seasons with resources for where you can get additional food or apply for different services that can kind of help you through the holiday season and the winter months, which, as we have heard on the news, um, they're anticipating food to be a little more um, tight, a little less accessibility to good nutritious foods 
because of supply and demand. So we wanted to make sure that everyone had access to all the resources available. We'll have representatives from like God's Pantry Food Bank um, to help you fill out applications for different programs and things like that. So uh, if you've been interested in applying for SNAP or God's Pantry Food or things like that, please come along because we will have people here to help you fill out those applications. Um, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or Susan, and uh, we will be putting that in the November 1st newsletter with all the details, and it will we will need you to RSVP by the previous Friday to make sure that we have enough food and resources for everyone. And thanks for being here, and happy Halloween. Are you dressed up? <laughs> Teresa is a dog trainer from the Leader Dogs, okay? And she's got a hat on and a, a sweatshirt. You know, it says Leader Dogs. She's got all the swag from and the Leader dog, Dogs. The dog treat pouch. Oh, treat pouch as well. And okay. They train with oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Okay. So these are some of the costumes. We have a costume um, contest here today. Um, uh, Staff is exempt, by the way. So um, I am going to announce the winners. The judges have made a decision and we have two prizes. We have the best costume. Well, yeah, I'll start with the best. Yeah, uh, the best costume is Kimberly May as a ladybug. And so we need to get her a picture made. And she is so cute. Um, got a, a red a shawl over a black, uh, you know, a, outfit and uh, it's got it's, it's a ladybug all right it's got little um dots all over it, black dots like a ladybug and a little flower on the lapel and um, and shoes that look like you know they would belong to a bug <laughs> okay she gets a 15 dollar a um gift card from kroger's okay and our second prize, and we're so happy that some of you decided to dress up, our second prize goes to Mary Hegg. Mary Hegg uh, told me she's dressed as a bum, but she didn't have a beard. So I said, well, you can be a lady buff. And so we have a lady bug and a lady bum. So uh, <laughs> Mary gets a $10 gift uh, card from Kroger's. So good costume. That, when she came in the door, I was like, who are you? I couldn't even recognize her because her hat was pulled down over her head and I could not recognize who she was until she told me. So, all right, that's wonderful. And an honorable mention, but we don't have a prize, will go to Michael Jones. Michael Jones tells me that he is Jason uh, from that uh, scary movie, Friday the 13th. <laughs> He's got a mask on over his face. It's very scary. <laughs> All right, no further ado, our first speaker is Pete Alberti. Some of you know Pete Alberti. A lot of you should know him because he's been with us for several years now. He is an insurance agent, uh, independent, and uh, he's gonna tell us about Medicare and the Advantage plans and um, you know what all he can help you all with as far as getting a, um, you know, a good plan. All right, Pete? All right, very good. How's everybody doing? Very good. Good to see you guys again. All right, so I did write a couple of notes. I'm not going to take a lot of time because I've had four presentations before, but I just want to kind of give you a couple of things to think about for annual enrollment for Medicare. So I'm going to hit some highlights. I know like Social Security has their increase, so that's your income should go up for next year for the Social Security increase. So that's great. Yay! Great increase for this year. A couple of things about Medicare. If you have a supplement, you have to pay that Part B deductible on some of the supplement plans. So your deductible on the Part B will be $226. So it's going down. Okay. So if you have a plan G, you have the deductible, you'll pay that first. If you have a plan F supplement, there's no out-of-pocket expenses on the plan. Your Part B cost, if you pay for the Part B out of your Social Security check for Medicare, it should go to $164.90 for next year. 
I know some of you might be paying the Part B, or maybe it's paid for for you, but it was 17010 It's going to go to 164.90. So again, that's going down a little bit next year on the Medicare cost. If anybody has a Medicare supplement, you want to change, you have to qualify to change Medicare supplement plans. It's good to do that every so often because maybe you have a plan that's a supplement that went up in price and maybe you want to change it to qualify. Now, the Advantage plans, we don't have to qualify. I'll talk about that in just a minute. The Part D plans, real quick. The Part D plans are the ones you get standalone when you have a supplement. Some of you might have a standalone drug plan. If you get a brand name on a standalone drug plan, the most they can charge that a deductible is $505. It's a pretty large deductible though. Now, if you have extra help or if you have Medicaid help, you don't pay the deductible, you're just gonna pay your co-pays or you may have a zero cost in some cases. But if you do get a standalone drug plan, you do have to pay the deductible first before you have a copay. If you have a standalone drug plan, and you have generics, usually the generic costs are very low, okay? So, Medicaid is going to be state help. Extra help is the reduced cost on your prescriptions. And some of you guys might have that help as well. So Medicare Advantage, let's talk about all these commercials. I'm sure you guys get stuff in the mail, Medicare Advantage, Medicare Advantage. But how do they promote it so much? How do you get all these things that are no cost? First thing about Medicare Advantage, I'm sure you guys know this. I've talked about it before. A lot of Medicare Advantage plans are getting funding from the federal government of what you paid into Medicare while you're working. That's how they can get these plans at a very low premium cost and maybe no deductible. Things for this year that have been reduced by some plans is the max amount of pocket. You may have reduced costs on your max amount of pocket with some plans. They may be increased the extra benefits. What I usually look for people is if you have a plan already and you like that company, staying with the same company is almost better for you because it just keeps the transition better and just looking to see what does that company offer for the following year? Do I have the best plan? So some plans are gonna have dental and vision and uh, hearing aids and over-the-counter items and gym membership and all these little extras. Make sure you use them all because now we're going into the end of the year. If you don't use those benefits, they go away at the end of the year and you start a new one. For example, over-the-counter, if they give you so much money, it does carry over about from quarter to quarter on some plans. But if you don't use it all, you start over and with your new amount. But you have that money left over, use that money. If you have money that's given to you by the company for food, some of these plans are going to have food benefits, like the dual plans. We call the dual plans when you have Medicare and Medicaid, and you have a lot of these extra benefits. Make sure you're taking every advantage you can of these Medicare Advantage plans, because these extra benefits are a huge help. Some of the plans now have a PPO dual plan. I think most of them are HMO, which HMO is fine for a lot of people because they have a nationwide network on some HMO plans. So most things on HMO, you want to use the network by far every time because they have cost to be higher. And now they've got some dual plans like United Healthcare. They'll be speaking a little bit later. We do a lot of plans with United some, and a lot of plans with Humana. If you want to go and get a PPO plan because maybe the network's broader, you have a uh, love one in another state, you might want to stay with them when you have a surgery, a PPO will allow you to use that in another state, okay? And some of the HMOs as well. The dual plans, uh, like I said, those are the ones that are going to have Medicaid and Medicare. So like I said, you're going to get so much extra and more benefits in those. So if you do qualify for Medicaid, you definitely want to get a dual plan, just not a regular plan. And we're able to check your Medicare to see which plan you have if you call us. If you need help from us, we work with all the companies in Lexington. And if you've got a plan, I can use some advice on it. If you want to review it, we can do that as well. But we have a system we can pull up your plan and see which one it is, and then make give you some advice. If I was a consumer like you guys, I wouldn't know anything about these plans either or know as much because there are like almost 40 different plans in the Lexington market. It's crazy. So that's what we do every day. We don't do anything else in our office but health insurance. We do Medicare planning and we do the Affordable Care Act. If you have any friends that need help with the Medicare, need help with the Affordable Care Act, we can both of those things. And uh, if we can help anybody, let us know. I don't want to take up too much time. I just want to give you an idea of what to look for. Look at your plan. You should get a renewal notice from your insurance company. And uh, if you need to make a change, let us know. We can kind of inform you of some of the improvements they've made. So just kind of keep it educational here since we're not really trying to promote a certain product. We're just telling you what to look for. But real quick, not take up too much time, but does anybody have any quick questions they do want to ask about Medicare or Medicare plans? Go ahead. Sure. 
Uh, is that automatic renew? Yes, great question. A lot of people do ask that. All plans automatic renew unless they tell you they're discontinuing your plan. But they rarely discontinue plans. So unless you get a letter stating otherwise, all plans will renew for the following year. Okay, that's for supplements, drug plans, and as well as your Medicare Advantage. Another question in the back. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, they're. Honestly, they shouldn't be calling you unless you signed up, unless you entered something on the internet and you've got your name out there. They recycle those. So if you ever filled out an online form or sent a postcard in, the problem with that system is they continue to recycle your name and you can tell one person not to call you, but someone else will call you as well. So you just have to tell them you're not interested uh, until it stops getting recycled, hopefully. But just never oh, sign up for a postcard. Never sign up online for anything because they will sell your name and recycle it. So that's that's a tough one. But uh, if you cover robo dollars, it does help. Questions over here? Close. Uh, me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I got a question. I heard that this coming year, and, and I just heard about it, that under the Medicare plan that uh, uh, that that your utility bills can be paid. That's correct. That's correct. That's okay, correct. Now, which ones are those? Well, we're not here to promote a particular okay. plan or company, but I know United may have some of those on their dual plans. So, if United is one of the companies you might might have, it's usually the dual plans, the ones that are Medicaid, Medicare. So it does have that feature. Now, you can use it for not just a utility, maybe for food, maybe for over the counter items. It's multiple use. So they try to make it, they try to make it where if you don't want it for this, you can use it for something else. So it's going to be a one card type thing and you can use it in different ways. But yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because that's good to share with everybody that may not know that. What one the commercial said, always check what the insurance company wants to give to us. Yeah, absolutely. And you do get a renewal notice if you're able to view those on some type of viewer or have someone show you those. I know since we're visually impaired, you can only see so much. But those are things that hopefully you guys can get uh, alerted to. Did you have a question, Tim? Go ahead. Oh, um, I got a question. I went to pick up a bunch of my drugs, and there was no copay. So I presume when you flip mine over, I guess I've already reached my out of pocket. Well, a lot of times if you have the plans with zero copay, uh, whether it's for the company itself or for, for the dual plan where it's Medicaid, Medicare, a lot of times they'll, they'll zero those out and they'll pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm that's what they're doing. So, okay. Absolutely. Any question over here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have received uh, a Medicare waiver. Uh huh. And uh, if you're on that, Question from Zoom. Question. If you didn't get his card today, we have his contact information and he'd be happy to talk to anybody individually too afterwards. And we want to thank Pete for sponsoring our lunch.
much today. Okay. Am I allowed to ask a question from Zoom? There's a Zoom question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hi, I'm new to Kentucky uh, from California and trying to navigate what I'm allowed to have and what not allowed to have. I would love to um, get your information as well. Absolutely. If you want to call in and get my information from uh, the center here and they can give it to you. If you, you have their number here, you can call them and get that number from them. All right. Thank you. That's good. And who is that? Or yeah, I'll give you my number right now if you want to. You want to take the number now? Obviously, yeah, go ahead. It is 859-312-9646. If you call in to me, if I don't read, answer the call, I'll leave you a message and I'll get with you let you know what's available here for you. Okay. okay very good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Come back. <laughs> Okay, next we have, uh, we have two more speakers you know, today. So we have Lisa Garrison, who has spoken to us earlier this year. And she's the one from United Healthcare. And she brought with her all those nice containers that we many of you took home that time. We talked about food storage and, and eating well on a, uh, eating healthy on a, on a budget. Well, today she's going to talk to us more about the United Healthcare plans, especially focusing on Medicaid. And there are handouts that she brought. More and uh, Rick and Jean are passing those out right now. Everyone has one to take home. Um, and they uh, have information in them as well as some candy and an orange, I think, is in there too. So everybody gets one of those. Lisa, come on up and... Uh, and give us your information. And she's dressed in a Halloween costume of a of a medieval uh, woman with a black a lovely black cape and a one of those you know old fashioned style hats. So um, yeah, really cool. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Halloween. It's coming up really soon. So like Susan said, there's a little bit of candy and there's a little bit of healthy in there with a little pantry, some information about our plan and our value-added benefits. And then there's some, uh, there's some uh, sour candy and some chocolate. So a little bit for everybody. Yeah, take the whole cup home and use it as you see fit. <laughs> and I just wanted to speak really quickly about our Medicaid plan here in the Commonwealth. We're one of six plans that if you're on Medicaid, you can choose from. And I just want to give you some highlights of what our plan offers. We offer zero co-pays on our hospital stays and our doctor visits. And we uh, also offer dental and vision. So for adults, you have a vision exam every year and you can get glasses every two years. And then you can have a dental exam, x-rays and cleaning every year as well. It might, I think it might be two, actually one uh, like every six months. So um, we do not include dentures at this time, um, but that's something we can always hope for. And in the dual plans that Pete referred to, uh, offer some uh, up to, I believe, three thousand dollars for dental work, which would in, which could include dentures. So if you are eligible for both and you are eligible for dentures, that money can be used for that on the dual plan. Some other things we offer uh, is a twenty-four-seven nurse line. So say you wake up in the middle of the night and you have symptoms that you don't know what they could be caused by. You can call the nurse line, you can describe your symptoms and they can try to coach you over the phone. Um, we also offer telehealth visits. So if you wanted to do a visit through your phone or through your computer, instead of just having the sound, you can also have them see your face and maybe see the symptoms that you're exhibiting, whether it's 
hives or a tooth that looks like it may have been broken, those are things that can happen as well. We also you offer. Go. Okay, I'm just going to put it down. Okay. And get the form sign. Right. Whatever sign. 30 acupuncture visits, so which is an interesting way of managing stress and um, other symptoms that you may be exhibiting with when pain, chronic pain as well. And we also support substance use disorder uh, help also if you are struggling with that or a member of your family is struggling with that. We have a behavioral health crisis line that you can call and at any hour of the day, seven days a week, you can call and there's somebody on the other line um, from Kentucky that can help you through that crisis. Some uh, times we have chronic conditions <clears throat> that need a little bit extra care and you need a case manager to kind of help you navigate that plan and make sure you have a wide uh, team serving you and making sure all of your needs are taken care of and that we do have a case management system. And that would be something you would work with through your member services line. So if you have our plan, that number's on the back of your card. <laughs> And we, the thing I think is really neat about our plan is if you are in the hospital for either a mental health condition or a surgery or procedure for whatever reason, when you're released, you can claim 14 meals from our company delivered by Mom's Meals. Mom's Meals is a distributor, a distributor of like, some of them are shelf stable, but most of them are like lean cuisine style meals that you put in your refrigerator. They're designated for your diet. Like there's a diabetes friendly diet, there's a heart friendly diet. So they will work with you and then send you those meals in the mail and you can keep them in your refrigerator. And that'll take care of at least 14 meals, but you won't have to prepare. Just put them in the microwave, heat them up, and there you go. We also have some online um, health as well. We have a very good website to help you navigate your coverage. You can find your numbers, your plan information, your prescription information. You can find out if a prescription is covered. You can also find out your ID numbers on there as well. And you can inter interact with your doctor through your chat. There's a doctor that you can reach through. We have a United Healthcare app, which is really cool. It has all your information in your smartphone. You do have to have a smartphone to do that. I see some of, oh, some of them aren't as smart as they should be, right, Charles? Sometimes our smartphones are dumb phones, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. I call um, an idiot phone. <laughs> an idiot phone, yes. Um, we do offer member rewards as you go along. If you have uh, children or grandchildren that are on the Medicaid plan, we have rewards for them getting their immunizations. So they can get a $25 gift card if your grandchildren want to get all of their immunizations by the time they're two or 13, then they can get rewards that way. And as adults, if you are one of our members, you can get a $100 gift card for getting your COVID vaccination. There's that. And I think that's pretty much all of the extra benefits I wanted to talk about that we have for this year. Next year, we do have some added benefits coming up. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you is there is a way you can interact with our, our uh, customer sales representatives or our customer care representatives, I think is the better term. And you can call in on your member services line and they can help connect you with resources that you may not know are available. Much like you're doing with your food fair next month, um, if you find that you're in an extra need with either heat or cooling for the summertime, or you need uh, extra food for the year or for the month, then they can help connect you with those resources just by talk, calling your member services line. That's something I'm really excited about um, through that. And one thing I did want to talk about is an app that I'm actually getting my first call on. This is not a United Healthcare app, but this is just something I wanted to share with you all. It's called Be My Eyes. And unfortunately, I can't call, I can't accept this call right now, but I have somebody who is visually impaired calling my phone because I volunteered to be somebody's eyes and help them. It is an app that you can download to your smartphone, and then you can interact with somebody that is seeing, and they can help you with whatever you are struggling with at that time. A friend of mine helped somebody 
find something that they had lost on the ground. And so it's a really good technical service that you can, if you're visually impaired, that you can have on your smartphone. Do you all have any questions about the Medicaid plan? This is open enrollment. So if you already have Medicaid, um, then you can either change your plan or just keep your plan. And um, if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I have a question on Zoom. Sure. Um, like the other gentleman, may I have your phone number because I have questions for you. Sure, my phone number is, and you can write it down, and I will also, Susan has it as well, but my number is 606-261-6459, and the name is Lisa Garrison with United Healthcare Community Plan. 606-261-6459, um, yes, and welcome to Kentucky. Thank you. All right, I'll turn it back over to Susan. All right, thank you, Lisa. All right, so we have our next speaker is Kia Briscoe. I sure hope I'm saying your name right. Yeah, because it's my first day to meet her. She is going to be excellent. She's a uh, got a, a wonderful program uh, for you on dealing with stress and we wanted this you know because the holidays are coming up and of course we're all stressed out during that time right stress and anxiety some positive coping techniques good afternoon hi are you through with your i'm so sorry it's okay can you Scan a document. Yes. And then print it or Yes. Okay. Um, so I am uh, the Career Resiliency Manager for the Kentucky Market uh, for United Healthcare. Uh, today we are going to talk about coping with anxiety and stress. Um, so I have a, a couple objectives. Uh, we're going to participate, excuse me, participants. First of all, let me tell you that I have anxiety. <laughs> so let's get that out there. So we hear me stumbling, you know, because I suffer from anxiety. So I've had to do the same things that I'm going to share with you all today for my own self, driving here, pulling in the parking lot, sitting. So um, I just want to let you know that. So anyway, I'm going to be able to explain stress and anxiety. You're going to learn the common uh, causes of stress and anxiety, and then you'll learn some new coping skills for stress and anxiety. So who am I? So I am from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I'm a mother, a wife, a person in long-term recovery. Um, I started my journey with United Healthcare back in 2018 as the recovery and resiliency manager for the state of Virginia. Um, and now I'm here in Kentucky. So in my spare time, I enjoy family activities, game nights, uh, football, NFL, rec, and my grandchildren. Uh, so my journey started uh, with stress and anxiety uh, back when I was probably about 10 years old. Um, by the age of 13, I was admitted into a state hospital in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, because of my inability to cope with life on life's terms. Uh, by the age of 16, I had found uh, what I thought was the answer in drugs with the answer, what I thought was the answer in drugs and alcohol. Um, I was doing everything that I thought that I was big and bad enough to do. Um, little did I know I was going down the wrong path um, because I still didn't have any coping skills. Uh, by the age of 21, my pain had finally outweighed my pleasure. Uh, and I knew that I had to find something else to do. Uh, follow my path to recovery, I found that my biggest issue was stress and learning how to cope. My biggest issue was stress and learning how to cope with it. Uh, so what is stress? So stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event that makes you feel uh, frustrated, angry, or 
even nervous. Stress is the feeling of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with mental or emotional pressure. Uh, when we're experiencing stress, we can experience it in all different ways. It's an individual. Individually, you can experience it. Um, for example, having a lot of responsibilities on your plate uh, that you're struggling to manage. In a group setting, uh, if your family is going through difficult, time, difficult times, such as bereavement or financial problems, in a community, if you belong to a religious group that is experiencing discrimination, or a member of society, for example, holidays or during natural disaster or events such as the pandemic. What causes stress? So many things can cause stress. You might feel stressed because of a big event in your life, or it might be a buildup of a lot, a lot, a lot of smaller things. Holidays for some create extra stress. Uh, this might make it harder for you to identify what's making you feel stressed or explain it be able to explain it to other people. Um, if you're worried about something, don't have much or any control over the outcome of the situation. If you have responsibilities that you find overwhelming, if you don't have enough work, too much work, um, if you experience discrimination, hate, abuse, or going through a period of uncertainty. So those are some of the things that can cause stress. So five tips for a healthy holiday, five tips for healthy holidays. So understand it is okay to say no. Take time, enjoy what is happening around you. Don't spread yourself so thin. That's one of my biggest issues, being able to say no, I don't have the capacity to, to do that. Um, take a vacation. A weekend to simply relax, a little time away, uh, and to revive yourself. So when I say vacation, not necessarily does it mean that you need to get on a plane and fly somewhere. A vacation could just be, you know, down to the local park and sit out with, you know, a little uh, crackers and maybe uh, ham and, and cheese and have your own little picnic, you know. Uh, create a budget. If you are going to buy some gifts during the holiday time, or you are trying to, you know, uh, do certain things, uh, set a budget. Only buy what you can afford. If you cannot afford to buy anything, um, then make something. Handmade gifts sometimes are the best because they're sentimental. When people make you gifts, sometimes we hold on to them a little longer than we do something that someone has bought. Um, so follow, follow your routine. Easiest way to avoid uh, stress, to have a routine and follow it. Don't worry about the aspect you cannot control. It's the time of the year, and it's a time to be grateful and reflect on your values. Sometimes we get caught up in the buying of the gifts and the, you know, the people and uh, maybe the people that are here or not here. Um, and so just being comfortable with the people that we have, sometimes we're, we're, we're too busy focused on, on tomorrow and uh, tomorrow never gets here. So, um, and why does tomorrow never get here? Because when tomorrow gets here, it's today all over again, okay? So um, signs of too much stress. So stress is displayed in four areas, your mind, body, behavior, and emotion. The signs that your body has had too much stress are headaches, fatigue, frequent infections. Uh, your mind displays worrying, impaired judgment, and hasty decisions. Emotionally, you might be irritable, depressed, or increased fussiness. And then lastly, your behavior might give signs of restlessness, loss of appetite, and accident prone. Stress can also cause health problems, heart disease, asthma, obesity, headaches, depression, and gastrointestinal problems. So negative coping responses. So anger, criticizing yourself, drinking alcohol, eating too much or too little, 
fighting, isolation, substitute. Those are all negative coping uh, responses. Here's some positive ones. Uh, getting outdoors, exercise, gardening, or making home repairs, seeking counseling if you continue to struggle with stress, writing, painting, or other creative activities, listening to music, going out with a friend, shopping, movie, dining, making and following through with an action plan to solve your problems, playing with a pet, uh, taking a bath, lying or crying, practice deep breathing, meditation, praying or going to church. Uh, one of the first things that I always do, um, especially when I am under stress, is I always say the serenity prayer. So God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change which is you all. I cannot change you all. The courage to change the things that I can, which is me. I can change me. And the wisdom to know the difference, which is which. <laughs> um, sometimes when tasks are bigger, if you break them down into smaller tasks, then they don't seem so overwhelming. Any questions? on stress well all right anxiety anxiety is the intense excessive and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations anxiety is the body's reaction to stress so all morning long because i am not a public speaker uh, that is something that was just thrown on my plate when I came to United Healthcare and I've had anxiety surrounding it since then. So every time I have to go somewhere and facilitate a training, because I do facilitate a lot of mental health first aid trainings and trauma-informed care and so on and so forth, um, I, I, I always have anxiety. So I have to do grounding. I have to sometimes sit still and just start naming all the colors that I see on the wall until I'm able to bring myself back to the here and now. Um, one of the things that I realized is that when I go somewhere new, because I don't know anybody, um, I try to make myself friendly. Well, not even make myself friendly because I am friendly. Um, but if I keep myself in the, in the here and now, then I don't have to worry about what later might look like. So when I came in, I was focused on greeting everyone. So I, I was no longer worried about, oh my God, how am I gonna sound? They want me to stand up there. Um, oh, there's a microphone, <laughs> you know? So, so many things that I can get caught up in when all I had to worry about was coming in and sitting down. That's all I had to worry about, you know? All right. Let's see where we are. We're almost done, guys. So common anxiety signs, so which uh, mimic uh, stress, kind of feeling nervous, restless, sweating, feeling weak or tired, having trouble sleeping, having a sense of in, impeding danger, excuse me, impending danger, and breathing rapidly. And I must say, I probably had most of them. <laughs> like pulled up, now my hands are sweaty, my heart is racing, I'm all, and I'm prescribed anxiety medicine for the times that I'm unable to get myself to a baseline alone. So if I'm unable to do that, then I do have something PRN that will assist me in doing that. But I try so hard to, you know, utilize the skills that I have. Um, or the coping mechanisms that I have so that I don't have to, do, to, to take that all the time. All right, so coping skills for anxiety and stress. So coping skills for anxiety, especially around the holidays, is to get adequate rest, eat balanced meals, and take deep breaths. Acknowledge your feelings. It is okay not to be okay. Reach out to someone that you trust to talk about it. Be realistic that the holidays come every year. And if you don't have it, it is okay. 
Stick to a budget. Do not spend more than you have. Plan ahead. If you plan to shop, don't wait till the last minute to do so. And learn to say no. Saying no is so healthy and it empowers you. I know that sometimes during the holidays, you know, we start to think about the people that are no longer here um, and how we miss, you know, uh, if your mom has passed on or your, uh, your brother or your children, you know, it, it sometimes not even passed on, but they live in states far away. And the way the economy is set up, I don't know about your pockets, but mine are empty. And so we don't always have money to, you know, I tell people all the time, I, <laughs> my money is funny and my credit won't get it. So um, <laughs> my money is funny and my credit won't get it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I hold on to the memories. You know, the pictures and the times that we did fun things and, you know, um, so remember that when the holidays come up, uh, that you all have lots of coping mechanisms that you can use, uh, not to say that you might not become down or you might not become anxious, but utilize the coping skills that you have to try to combat some of that. Um, and then get with the people that you know do love you. You know, this this is a wonderful center here. I, I, I can't imagine uh, being lonely on a holiday with a with all of these people that are in here that seem to have greeted each other uh, in, in a loving way. So um, that's all I have. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Is there anything I can Yes, sir. I don't have a question, but I just want to say that uh, I'm in recovery also, and I just want to applaud you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Twenty four years, uh, October seventh, twenty four years. I'm, I'm working on my second year. Keep pushing, baby. Keep pushing. I promise you, if you don't pick it up, it will not get in. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me. That was great having something on the serious side and a lot of good suggestions i think we're in that and uh, I, I hope everybody learned something that they can take home and and um and remember i mean just going for a walk outside well maybe not today but yesterday would have been a good day to do that <laughs> yeah yeah all right great well we finished on time i'm 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 impressed. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, Lisa is still here. Uh, Pete has already left. Uh, uh, Charleston, I see your hand raised. Uh, what do you think? Think about your dog and your dog's name. Oh, Susan up here at the microphone. I don't have a dog. I have a cat. <laughs> and she's not a seeing eye cat either. No, that's Teresa. That's Teresa. She's uh, uh, in her office right now taking uh, care of her new dog guy. Yes. Okay. Oh, she disappeared. Teresa. Yeah, Charleston. Charleston had a question. Charleston, you want to repeat that question? Teresa just walked in. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. My doggie's behaving. She's just resting. So I can take questions if you have any questions for me. How was your training? Oh, my training was absolutely amazing. Leader Dogs for the Blind offers two different programs. One is orientation and mobility for people using the white cane and the guide dog mobility instruction. So for people that want to get a guide dog, they not only provide you with the dog, but three weeks of training on how to be successful as a guide dog team. And that organization is just outstanding. They cover every last little detail from getting you up there, transportation, uh, wonderful dorm rooms, individual dorm rooms. The food is phenomenal. Everyone will tell you that. They feed you three meals a day. Um, the third day that you're there, you're paired with your dog and they match you up according to 
your lifestyle, your personality, the dog's personality, the dog's endurance, um, what you're going to be doing together as a team. And uh, I, I couldn't be more pleased at the dog that they paired me with. Risa is, she's perfect for me. She's high energy. She's a little bit of a handful and uh, a little stubborn at times, but you know, my husband said it kind of reminds him of somebody he knows. <laughs> <clears throat> but she's also very well worth all of the work. She's an excellent guide dog. She performs excellently when she's in harness and leading me. She's very excitable because she is a golden. So uh, we just, we got to approach, have people approach her very slowly and quietly. Um, so she doesn't get too excited and wants to jump or bark. So yeah, the training there was phenomenal. I could go on and on, but I would highly recommend them for either orientation and the orientation and mobility is now one week long. And uh, you can apply for the orientation and mobility if you're wanting to learn more skills with using the white cane and being independent with a cane. It is really great. While I was there, someone from the Kentucky Council of the Blind was also there getting her one week of training for O&M. Um, Debbie Dethridge was up there and she she said that she absolutely loved her time there. She learned a lot of new skills. We also, all of us made a lot of new friends that we're staying in touch with um, and kind of supporting each other through our journeys of orientation and mobility, whether it be with a cane or with a dog. Long answer, but there you go. I talk a lot. Any other questions? Okay, just let me know if you do. Thanks for being here today. Welcome. Okay, we're we're getting ready for our food distributions. Those of you who have signed up for these supplemental groceries that uh, we can deliver. Um, well, we were gonna. Yeah hand them out today. Uh, so yeah, so you just uh, line up where you normally do and uh, we'll go through the line and um, and we're gonna go ahead and, and um, get that going. We've got uh, bags of groceries and we've got some processed cheddar cheese.